Protein is an incredibly important part of our diet. This is because it's a macronutrient that we need to eat because we cannot produce a lot of it on our own. So it's important that we support our processes for our skin, our bone health, our muscles, because without it, we kind of start breaking down. We can have what's called sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss, osteoporosis. So protein is incredibly important for your longevity and health. However, protein recommendations and a lot of information out there can be kind of confusing because it's a kind of new field for nutrition. So I'm going to try to decompose what you need to know about protein. So protein recommendations can vary a lot based off of your activity level. And this is because when you're strength training or you're running, you are breaking down a lot of your bones and your muscles and putting stress on your connective tissue, like your tendons and your ligaments, and this requires protein to repair. So if you're just a healthy adult and you're not actively being active, the FDA recommends about 0.8 gram per kilogram, and for an average American who weighs 200 pounds, this should convert to about 91 kilograms, which is about 73 grams of protein a day. So the RDA was made to satisfy 97% of the population or two standard deviations on either side. So it, it's not gonna work for literally everybody, but most people who are healthy adults who do not exercise much should be fine with about 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein. So for strength athletes, such as those who wrestle or weightlift, you can look at a range of 1.4 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. And for a 200 pound typically weighing adult male at 1.5 grams per kilogram, this comes out to about 136 grams of protein a day, which is incredibly achievable for a lot of people to achieve. Personally, I'm a little bit higher in that range, but it's up to you to decide where you wanna land. And it should be noted to maximize muscle protein synthesis that your meals should contain about 25 to 50 grams of protein at once to maximize that muscle protein synthesis signal. Endurance athletes put an incredible amount of strain and damage on their bones and muscles when they're running for hours. This is because if you can imagine landing on concrete or whatever surface you're running on, you create a lot of micro tears in the muscle and micro fractures in the bone. And this is totally fine and it's great for signaling growth and recovery and actually increasing performance. However, that amount of damage carries with it an increased requirement of protein or amino acids to rebuild that tissue. So it's actually interesting that some endurance athletes might carry the same or higher protein requirement than a strength athlete, which is kind of unintuitive if you were to think like, what does a bodybuilder look like and what does a marathon runner look like? Two different animals, but one of them just burns through a lot more amino acids because of how much tissue they're breaking down. So for an endurance athlete, the recommendation is 1.2 grams to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. For those of you who are losing weight, the protein requirement goes up quite substantially to 1.8 to 2.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And this is because of a couple of factors. So first of all, when you're in a caloric deficit, which is required to lose weight, it is essential to eat a high proportion of protein relative to your total consumption of calories. And this is because protein is muscle sparing, which means that when you lose weight, you're trying to preserve as much of that muscle tissue as possible because muscle tissue is a good signal of longevity and health. So if you're pulling calories from your muscle tissue and your other organs instead of from what you eat, it could be detrimental to your long-term health. So one of the recommendations is obviously to eat more protein because those free floating proteins in your bloodstream that you just consumed can spare that muscle tissue. And also if you're trying to lose weight, it's important to perform resistance exercise so you can stimulate um, a demand on your body to say, hey, we're using this muscle tissue, let's flag it for maintenance and also to build more tissue even in a circumstance of losing weight because we would like to think that if we're in a caloric deficit we'll just magically lose our adipose or fat tissue 
However, that's not the way nutrition or the real world works. So protein is more satiating than fat or carbohydrates, which is kind of intuitive. So if you can imagine eating a 400 calorie chicken breast versus the same amount of calories of potato chips, I probably wouldn't stop at 400 calories of potato chips. I'd be at 1200 before I feel any satiation. So personally, I feel like protein helps me regulate my own personal appetite. And this is also supported in the literature. So you can release more GLP-1 or sat like satiating neuropeptides when you eat a higher protein meal, which also suppresses hunger hormones such as ghrelin, which can reduce cravings in the long run. Additionally, protein, when you digest it, requires more calories to burn and digest that fuel relative to carbohydrates or fat. So it's found that diets higher in protein can burn an extra 170 calories a day, which might not seem like much, but when you add in the fact that we live for many days in our lifetime, it can add up to a big effect. Animal and plant foods contain 20 amino acids of varying digestibility and compositions of different amino acid amounts. And this is important because there are nine essential amino acids that we must eat in our diet because if we don't, we can't produce them on our own. And this is to say that some plant-based people, vegans, vegetarians who choose to eat largely plant-based diets can still get enough protein in their diet. They just m may be a little bit more mindful to get EAAs total. And this is important because if we don't get enough essential amino acids, we can have some side effects. So some are reduced fertility, vomiting, depression, and insomnia, among many other side effects. And this is important because 50% of homebound elderly US citizens are deficient in at least one amino acid or essential amino acid. And it's important that you make sure you're covering all your EAA requirements with the diet that you choose to eat. And to further complicate this, not all plant and animal sources digest the same. So the digestible indispensable amino acid score, DIAS, means that some foods have a higher digestibility of protein than others. So you should just do your research about what you're consuming and if you can digest those amino acids that you need in your diet. So when should we be eating our protein? In my opinion, breakfast is the most important meal of the day because most people go eight hours without consuming any amino acids throughout the night and your muscle is actually a big store of protein for your body. So it actually donates a lot of amino acids to other organs to carry out that renewal we were talking about earlier. And it's, in my opinion, a great time to get 35 to 50 grams of protein to stop that breakdown of the muscle and create an environment where you're anabolic or you're building tissue instead of breaking it down. And that's just one of the meals that I think is important. I also think 35 to 50 grams of protein in the evening is important. And if you're interested in maximizing your muscle growth, a third and even fourth meal separated by three or four hours would be optimal all with 35 to 50 grams of protein. So what are some foods that we can eat that are high in protein that can be additive to our health? This topic can be kind of emotionally charged for some people and it can be kind of combative, especially like the vegetarians and the carnivores and the omnivores, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, in my opinion, we should be having more of a conversation about what is what does the literature say instead of kind of charity picking articles um, on each side. And it's my opinion that plant-based diets are essential for your health. So even if you are a meat eater, you should still have a foundation of whole vegetables and fruits because these are the things that's going to give you your micronutrients, your minerals, and you know, it's a great foundation of protein for your day. Um, and personally, I choose to consume eggs, lean meats, fish, because these are things that give me great amounts of fatty acids that are good for me, like omega-3s, omega-6s. And it's entirely possible to get all of your nutrition 
through plant-based sources only. So it's really a personal choice. However, I would say to monitor your intake of excess calories, especially in the presence of increased saturated fat, because this is how you can develop things such as obesity and atherosclerosis, which can cause things like myocardial infarctions or heart attacks. So I hope you enjoyed the nutrition topic for today. I hope you should feel relieved knowing that you can eat anywhere from 0.8 grams per kilogram to 2.7 grams per kilogram of protein, uh, and that's been considered safe. And I would say to consult your doctor before making a change in your diet, because I am a student physical therapist and this is not medical advice. Uh, and if you found this useful, you can subscribe, like, and visit my website, cardigansky.com, and let me know what you think in the comments. See y'all later. Peace.